Hello all, Rick here with another Starfleet vessel from the late 24th century. Following on from my previous, the Prometheus class. It only really had one main appearance, but did turn up in several other episodes, and always struck me as cool, in a gleefully eight-year-old Power Rangers Zord kind of way. Somebody make a variation with a plastic looking laser sword or something. The Prometheus class was designed by Rick Sternbach and rendered by Adam Lebowitz and Brandon McDougall. The vessel itself was to appear as an incredibly advanced ship and as such took the profile of the Intrepid class and threw in some sovereign style to create the look. From there the idea of the multi-vector assault mode, where the ship splits into three, contributed to its design and placement of the nacelles and the inclusion of more familiar elements such as the shutter style hangar bay on the rear. The angular vessel was very much made to look more aggressive, while its interiors had the white unblemished look of a fresh off the factory floor gleam to them, befitting a new prototype. Alongside the USS Defiant, the Prometheus class was one of only a handful of starships that was designed with little in the way of exploration and diplomacy in mind. Starfleet's policy on creating battleships is basically, well we don't do that, yet here stands a vessel that very much fits the profile for a combat ship, designed as such from the ground up. It just so happens to be the most advanced vessel of its time. If you have watched the other videos in this ship series, you know that I said this about the Sovereign 2, which was true at the time of its launch, but the Prometheus followed only a few years after, born from the same drive to produce the top of the line vessels. Unlike the Sovereign and Akira, which were amazingly well armed, the Prometheus lacked the facilities to act as an effective exploratory vessel, although it does possess advanced sensor systems, but that is kind of a given for a Federation vessel. The design work began in 2365, after the USS Enterprise NCC 1701D recounted its encounter with the Borg and spurred on Starfleet's development of newer ship classes, a common origin for many of the ships that came out of the 2370s. However, the designs of the Prometheus were more advanced and experimental than those of other designs on the drawing board of the time, and when the Borg made their advance in 2366 the Prometheus was nowhere near ready, still in the design phase. At this time the multi-vector assault mode even was planned to split into five vessels, but this was too resource intensive for even the advanced Prometheus. When the Borg steamrolled through the fleet of Wolf 359, Starfleet made a difficult choice to shelve a bunch of designs and focus down on producing fewer lines, for it had spread its development too thin, which had postponed the launch of many new ships. Alongside designs like the Lunar class, the Prometheus was shelved for a time, the many experimental technologies and requirements being cited as the reason. It would not be until the early 2370s that the design continued, making use of the developments ushered in on other projects. Unlike the other ship designs, which were of course classified but not secret, the development of the Prometheus class was heavily restricted to top secret. It featured the advancements of bioneural technology as seen on the contemporaries, and the ablative armour systems developed for the Defiant class. Additionally, it had the regenerative shielding, like the smart system designed for the Nova class, and the biggest experimental technology at play was, of course, the multi-vector assault mode, which was a combat orientated development on the saucer separation system on many other ships. However, this saw several improvements over that system, such as the inclusion of a dedicated warp drive for each segment, nacelles, a computer core, a deflector, and indeed almost everything needed to mark each section as an individual vessel. This allowed the Prometheus to stack the odds in its favour in combat and coordinate attack patterns among its sections, and each part could be coordinated from the main bridge. 
Speaking of the command centre, the bridge was very uncluttered and well lit for a vessel of this era, providing clear views to all the monitors from every station. Even the helm and ops stations were recessed into the floor to allow for an unobstructed view of the main view screen. The nature of the multi-vector assault mode meant that the ship featured an unprecedented level of automation, and the entire ship could be operated by a couple of officers albeit not effectively, plus things like damage would have to be repaired by the crew. Each deck also featured hollow emitters that would project the emergency medical hologram to any location, expanding the automated feel of the vessel. The first of the line was launched in 2374, the USS Prometheus NX74913, although its hull displayed NX59650. It was launched on Stardate 50749.5 from the Beta Antares shipyards in the Antares sector, and at the time only four officers were trained to operate the vessel in its entirety. It had a crew of 144 people and was 15 decks tall. It was a length of 415 metres, width 170, and height of 113 metres with a mass of 850,000 metric tonnes. The ship was also the fastest vessel of the time, exceeding the Sovereign in speed and matching the intrepid inconsistent cruising velocity. This was attributed to its numerous warp cores, the main one located in the main hull while four others were spread throughout the constituent parts to provide independent power supplies when it was in its assault mode. When assembled, the Prometheus had a maximum warp factor of 9.99, but even more impressive, in my opinion, was the fact that it could maintain a cruising speed of 9.5, much like the Intrepid class. This made the Sovereign's title as the fastest ship ever produced a short-lived crown, as five years later its top speed was beaten. However, that is not to say the Sovereign was now obsolete, far from it. The Prometheus class's high level of technology and experimental systems took their toll on the ship, and it was expected to have an operational time of only one year before extensive maintenance was needed. It was built to travel fast to an area, take care of a threat or complete its patrols, and then return to an installation. This gave it the mission profile of a deep space advanced tactical escort, Effectively, a combat response ship. A battleship. <gasps> Sorry, not a battleship. Wink wink. Speaking of, its armaments included 13 Type 12 collimated phaser arrays and three Mark 95 direct fire photon torpedo launchers, although it seems remiss not to include quantum torpedo launchers, so I assume these were just dependent on payload. Alternatively, non-canon stories have them fitted with Defiant-style pulse phase cannons, which does not seem out of the realm of possibility either. It also retained a small number of auxiliary craft, although not many, because why would it realistically need them? It had two shuttlecraft and four shuttle pods. This lacks any worker bees, which is probably because it was not to spend too long away from a space dock. By 2377, the Prometheus itself had entered full service and was assigned to the defence of the Sol system, and two more Prometheus vessels had been launched, the USS Cerberus, the USS Hercules, and can I just say, can you think of a more appropriately named vessel than the Cerberus, the three-headed guard dog for this class of ship? The vessel was also seen in the Battle of Procyon V, which was set in the 26th century, and apocryphal tales tell us that this is because the fleet was constructed of temporal agents and displaced vessels from the timeline, so it's still up in the air if the Prometheus class actually persisted into this era. Because of the mission profile of this class, however, we never really see a fleet of them, unlike the Sovereign which is continually developed as its all-rounder state allowed for the justification of more ships. The Prometheus was designed to do one thing, and to do it well. Respond to a threat, and neutralise it. In this regard, it is similar to the Defiant, but if the Defiant was a powerful battle axe, the Prometheus was a longsword. Its level of advancement was 
even targeted by the Romulans as a prize to learn Starfleet's greatest tactical developments, but fortunately they failed in that hijacking attempt. Finally, the Prometheus, for all its tricks, was not expected to function for long periods away from the fleet. So you are not likely to ever see them pushing that final frontier. Most likely they would be idling in space dock until needed. Thank you for watching this video on the Prometheus class. I've been Rick and I'll see you next time. I often hear YouTubers saying things like I've changed my microphone or my setup or software, let me know if this all looks good and I think to myself as a casual viewer, you did? I was not looking and cannot tell. But here I am saying that this is the first video I have made on new software and a completely new PC. The theme seemed fitting to cover this new vessel on my souped up work PC so I guess I hope it came out well. Thanks again. And goodbye.